Hello, Tab Nation. It's Tom, and today we're going to be doing another video on Auto Hockey V2. Uh, I'm slowly kind of working through some of my more interesting, popular videos that I did in V1, but never really did in V2. Uh, so, you know, if you have one specifically that you don't know if I touched on yet, just let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'm slowly trying to get to them here and there, um, just to kind of give you options on V1, V2. Uh, and something I just want to point out, um, I did a video about this called the HK V2 Script Converter. Uh, so if I haven't done that video yet, uh, this is a very good tool. I did do a video about this tool specifically, where you, on this side, you copy and paste uh, your V1 code, and then on the other side, push the little arrow thing here on the other side, it will spit it out into V2. It's not always 100% perfect, but hey, a lot of times it does work, most of the times, I guess. Uh, take it as you will, uh, but at least at the start, and hopefully you can figure it out from there until I do do a video on your specific request, or just something I get around to. Uh, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things that I love, because not many people know that you can even do this in auto hotkeys. Um, but how to make two scripts basically talk to each other. You know, how can I send data from one script to another script on my computer? And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, the nice thing is about this, if you want the code, because as you can see, it's a little complex on some of it, um, you can dive into the actual HK website, which I'll link in the description below. Uh, we're using example number four here. Um, so here's the code. So here's script number one. Um, this is the receiver, so the script that's looking for the data, and then here's the script that is sending the data. Um, so obviously the sending one's a little bit more complex. Um, we're not going to fully dive into this, uh, just more of a showcase on how to use it. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start with our sender, because obviously that's where we should. Um, target script title, um, you just want to call, uh, that way you know where you're sending this data to a specific script. You don't want every single script catching this data. Um, that way you can be more targeted uh, versus random, which is really nice. Um, so uh, this uh, file I'm calling sender.ahk. Uh, the one I'm sending the data to, as you see here, is receiver.ahk. Uh, obviously the class is auto hockey, so yeah. Um, basically, um, when I'm ready to send the data, uh, you can do this however you want, but for the sake of the video, we're just doing F1. Uh, it's going to give us a little input box here. Uh, you can obviously change the text here to say whatever you're uh, trying to send, I guess, to be more specific. Um, so right now, it's just very simple. Enter some text to send. And then, you know, it's going to send the text through uh, WN underscore copy data. Uh, it's a built-in OS thing. Um, but yeah, uh, then there's a few if statements here. So if uh, in the input box, if I push cancel, then just closes the message box and until I push F1 again. Maybe I just did it by accident, whatever. Um, if the result is blank, um, you know, it's basically saying it timed out uh, or something just went wrong in general with uh, the zero. Um, so maybe you need to check out some debugging, see what's going on there. Can't really help you with that because uh, it could be, I don't know, something wrong with the code or user error or who knows. Um, but yeah, uh, so all this basically, like I said, it's pretty complex. It's very well commented. Um, you can read about it more on the uh, Auto Hockey website. Um, you can change the timeout. Uh, 4,000 milliseconds, uh, that converts to 4 seconds. Um, so that's basically saying optional milliseconds to wait for a response from the receiver. Um, just because it is waiting to see if, you know, it sent and it was actually retrieved. Uh, I'll show you an example of me waiting for this to time out. So we'll just do four seconds. Um, actually, just for the sake of the video, we're going to make it a little bit longer. And let me make sure I have no other scripts running. Um, but yeah, so save this file. Um, I'm naming it sender.ahk. You can name it to whatever you want. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, then we're going to jump over here to, oops, sorry. Uh, receiver.ahk. Way simpler, um, but we're doing on message. That's kind of the big thing here. Uh, we're using this uh, 0x004a. Uh, we're waiting for that copy data. 
And 044A is, you know, the same thing as the WM copy data. Uh, that's just like the code for it, I guess you would say. Uh, I can't remember what to call these. Uh, darn. Drawing a blank. Let me know in the comments below. I can't remember what to call these. I know it's something simple. Um, basically, what we're going to do here is you can do whatever you want with the data. Maybe you want it to be stored in an INI file or something. doesn't really matter, but uh, we're just going to do message box and copy of data. You know, what did it receive? Um, which it's getting, you know, as you can see up here from string git, string address. Here's all the parameters, retrieves from the data structure, IP data member, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. Uh, and then it's going to return true. Um, and that's basically what it's waiting for on this side, uh, sender, where it's, you know, waiting to see like if it got a zero uh, or a one with that timeout. Um, just to let you know that it did work. If not, maybe you can have it loop to try again or give you a message box, um, you know, whatever you want. You know, it's up to you. Uh, but yeah, let us uh, run this. Make sure no other scripts are running. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to launch uh, the receiver somewhere. I'll just show you so you guys know. Uh, here's the two files. So sender and receiver, it should have that auto hotkey logo. If it's just a script, obviously, if you compile it, it's whatever logo you want it, or just the default one. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead, run this receiver. Uh, obviously, we want to run it in version 2. Um, if you don't want this pop-up, you can always add, uh, you know, requires AHK version 2 or bigger. All right, that's running. Now we're going to run the sender. Also run that in version 2, obviously, because this is a version 2 video. All right, so now I'm going to press F1. I'm going to go ahead and type in hello world, press OK. And as you see, this is the message box, receiver.hk, hello world. Now I'm just going to wait. There's that 8 seconds or 800 or 8,000 milliseconds. Uh, I did that because... Um, I haven't confirmed this yet, so it hasn't returned that I have accepted this. Because this message box could be on another screen and I haven't noticed it yet. So it's going to throw that error because of that. Um, but if I go ahead and uh, run them again and then complete it in those 8 seconds, I uh, push the message box in 8 seconds, so what's up? Press OK. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Wait about eight seconds roughly and as you notice we're not going to get that error anymore um the reason why is because uh message box if that message box is sitting there i haven't clicked on it, that okay button it's stuck on this line of code it's not going to go to this next where it's going to return a true um so this is basically saying hey look i waited eight seconds he hasn't acknowledged the message so do whatever here it's just going to throw an error but you can make it maybe send again or just get a message box saying hey this script i was trying to target it doesn't seem like it noticed what i was doing uh maybe you want to try again or whatever so it's really up to you to customize it this is a very simple um like i said um just copy and paste a lot of this make those few changes that i said i mean the 8,000 milliseconds that's pretty quick uh you can always just get rid of this, honestly, if you want. Um, just, you know, delete some of these uh, like this. Um, or make it like a much larger number. Um, yeah, it's up to you. All right, everybody, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And hope you guys find this useful. This is probably, I don't use it very often, but this is probably one of the coolest things I feel like I have ever been able to use auto keys with. I mean, because it just adds a whole another level of uh, stuff and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I know one of the comments that's going to come up a lot is obviously like, okay, this works on my computer. How do I make it communicate across, you know, a co-worker's computer or another computer within my house? Uh, we can do a video on that if you guys are interested. I mean, there's a few ways. I mean, the first one that just pops in my head is using INI files stored, uh, stored on a local shared folder or a shared drive, depending if you're like at a business or something. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see that, let me know. Like the video. We hit 30 likes. I'll do a follow-up on how to communicate between two scripts that are on two physically different computers versus, you know, just on the same one. Um, but yeah, 
All right, guys. Have a good one. See you on the next one.